presenter, Fred Schilmover. Fred is the founder and CEO of Insight Squared, a data intelligence system that grows revenue, profit, and productivity for your small or medium-sized business by analyzing data from your existing software to help you make better data-driven decisions. Fred headed global IT and was an associate at Bessemer Venture Partners. His background includes an SMB consultancy he founded as well as corporate development at Salesforce.com. Fred has a BA from Tufts and an MBA from Harvard Business School. In his time off, Fred is an avid wakeboarder. That being said, and without further ado, here's Fred. Hello, my name is Fred Schilmover and I'm the CEO and founder of Insight Squared. We provide high growth inside sales teams with the analytics and insight they need to maximize sales performance, close more deals, and grow faster. Since starting Insight Squared, we've helped thousands of sales teams better prioritize their pipelines and learn how to both forecast and hit their numbers more effectively. Today we're going to talk about why you're going to miss your quarter, or hopefully why you're not going to miss your quarter. So starting off, if you're worried about missing, or worse yet, if you really don't know, I'm going to share some tools that you should be using to diagnose, react, and improve your inside sales system. So by this time, one month in, you really should know if you're positioned to make this quarter and probably the next and beyond. What I've seen through hundreds of interactions with inside sales leaders is that even in highly transactional inside sales driven models, people aren't often looking far enough around the corner. Part of the reason people aren't looking far enough is that the lines between sales and marketing continue to blur. There was a time where I think sales and marketing alignment was a much bigger question. That's not the case anymore. If you don't have it, bottom line is you're at risk. It's effectively one go-to-market team. At Insight Squared, we don't have a Monday morning sales meeting. We have a go-to-market meeting. And there's an incredible amount of predictive power in the data that's just sitting there very often underutilized, underleveraged across those two teams. And one of the challenges we have is it's very easy to get caught up in the manners at hand deal execution, poaching on current pipeline, hiring to support growth, and traditional rules of thumb in sales like 3x pipeline coverage are far too blunt in today's world. In today's world, you have to be analytically rigorous to compete. There are lots of businesses where it's possible to win on sheer execution, and today, being data-driven in an inside sales organization can really give you that competitive advantage. But at some point in the not-too-distant future, It'll simply be table stakes. There's no other way that you'll be able to run it. So let's jump in. So let's talk about what are the constraints of your business. What are the rate limiting factors that are preventing you from growing faster? Now, one I didn't put on here is delivery. And if you can't fulfill demand, can't stand up servers fast enough, can't ship products fast enough, either you're lucky enough to be one of the handful of extremely hyper growth companies out there, or maybe you're unlucky because you've got challenges with technology or product architecture. But for the majority of us in high growth, inside sales driven businesses, there are two rate limiting factors. Input, pipeline, demand, leads, visitors, and throughput, conversion, coverage, ability to process the demand through the sales and marketing engine. Underlying all these principles is the fact that we're moving away from a time where salespeople were artisans, where sales was an artisan production. I'm sure by now you've heard the analogy that inside sales to a large extent is mirroring the industrial revolution. Costs are coming down, efficiency is going up, and production is growing massively. And that's why we're all here. We're here to be on the leading edge of this transition. And one of the challenges all of us have is that sales as a profession is becoming broader and more complicated. Think about the breadth of skills that you need to have for yourself and on your team. Sales still requires all the traditional sales skills, methodology, coaching, management. But now, sales is becoming far more analytical than it was in the past. This is our production line at Insight Square that we've designed by working with some of the best-in-class practitioners of the inside sales model. Marketing generates demand. We have an optimized marketing automation engine. This is augmented through business development reps who nurture. And this is a division of labor and specialization, just like you have in a modern production line. The BDRs schedule appointments and generate pipeline for our account execs who close the business that we then service and retain. So let's talk about what these rate-limiting factors actually are. To understand what you need to hit your goal, you've got to work backwards through the system, and you've got to break down the components. How much inventory pipeline do you need? 
how good, what does the conversion look like, and what will it look like in the future, and how soon, what does the sales and marketing look like. So we're going to break down each of these. Now when it comes to measuring pipeline or inventory, very often times I see folks mapping pipeline inventory in the shape of a sales funnel, not actually tied to conversion history or future expectations. This will absolutely give you a false understanding of your pipeline and of your sales funnel. Just because you've got more opportunities in stage one than in stage two does not make this a conversion funnel. You've got to evaluate your pipeline inventory and then match it to your historical conversion funnel. You have to understand that you can use history to predict the future. And in fact, we've got a free app on the Salesforce App Exchange that can calculate your historical conversion rates for you. Now, a pro tip here is don't look at it in the old way, limited to the sales funnel. Extend up and look at the entire sales and marketing funnel. And you, with this, you'll be able to see around one more corner. Look further up the stack. And the same goes for sales cycle. Don't just measure the overall sales cycle. Break it down into stages. Understand how long it takes you to get through each stage in the sales cycle, and then realize that there is no average sales cycle when it applies to a specific opportunity. Just like you can't win 50% of one deal, you won't always perform to your average. And understand that if you're looking at a specific opportunity or a small set of opportunities, there is going to be variability out there. So when you put all these three things together, how much, how good, how soon, you should start to form an opinion of how much input you need in your inside sales assembly line to hit your target. And with these factors, you can put it all together and start building a sales forecast to understand, will you hit your number? Now, one of the other rate limiting factors is coverage. I don't know if anyone's ever seen a chart like the one here on the left, where the company quarterly target is larger than the roll up of your rep's quota. This means you're quota constrained. You need to hire more salespeople. But this can also be misleading. What if your quotas were actually set off of pipeline constraints, not individual execution constraints? Are you sure that your sales team can't do 20% more, 50% more, 100% more? If you've had standout performances in your past, maybe those are anomalous, or maybe those are instances where the other rate limiting factors all fell into line. The real coverage rate limiter is capacity. Are your reps running too many opportunities or too many leads? Do you have the right sales process? As a quick anecdote, we made a, an adjustment about a year ago where we scheduled one hour discovery calls and we came to a point where we fundamentally believed that we were uh, quota constrained and we realized that a lot of these meetings wrapped up early in 30 minutes and we scheduled follow up calls. All of a sudden, we cut our discovery calls from 60 minutes to 30 minutes and a bunch of capacity appeared. We had an inefficient sales process. So here's one piece of advice. Don't expect to grow the engine and tune at the same time. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try, but don't expect it. Don't expect that you can double your leads, double the size of your team, and at the same time, improve performance. If your results are banking on that, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Again, this doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Look at your rate limiting factors, figure out the most sensitive areas in your production line, and decide which factor you think you can move the most, and work as hard as you can to do that. But don't forecast it. If you need performance improvements during high growth to hit your number, there's a good chance you're not going to hit it. Be sober about it. Be honest. Share it with your team. Get others involved in the effort. If, for example, you're short on top of the funnel leads, marketing knowing that earlier could help them let loose on that marginal, more expensive campaign. If you're short on funnel conversion, maybe it's a good time for the company to invest more heavily in product marketing or training. The bottom line is, for you to know if you're going to hit your quarter, you have to know your rate limiting factors. You have to be looking around the corner. It's not rocket science, but you have to do the work if you want to hit your number. Thank you for joining me today. Really appreciate your time. If you want to learn more about Insight Squared and the free tools that we have to help you grow your business, visit us at insightsquared.com free.